Before we begin the lesson, let's take a look at the finished product of what you'll be programming. So let's start to scroll this page. When creating parallax effects, the programmer's goal is to make different layers move at different speeds. It's sometimes programmed according to where the user's mouse is on the screen. Sometimes it's programmed using the scrolling mechanism of the page. And that's what we're going to be targeting in this tutorial. So you can see how my content moves at one speed and the layer behind it moves at a different speed during the scroll mechanism of a page. And it's a similar concept to Disney's multiplane camera where different layers will move at different speeds to give the viewer a better sense of depth and realism in their animations. And what we've created here, what you're looking at on this page, is going to essentially use just one line of JavaScript to produce this parallax scrolling effect. We're going to start with a blank HTML file. It's named example.html. And all it has is a rule for the body that's going to add a background image to the body of the page. And let's see what that renders. Very simple. Nothing's happening yet because there's no content to even scroll. There's just a background applied to the page. And you can set it to fixed or scroll. Now I'm going to add all of the content to the body of my page. Now here I have a script that's going to dynamically render 50 lines or 49 lines and you don't have to worry yourself with that script because it's there as dummy content. You would have your actual page content there. Now if we take a look at what that renders, we have our background with a bunch of dummy content and now we can scroll that content, 49 lines of it. Now I'm going to go up into the CSS and I'm going to put a rule for the content layer div right here to position it absolute on the page. Now right above my content layer div I'm going to add parallax layer 1. That's another div that lives right above your content layer. Now I'm going to put the CSS properties in place for that new element. Go up into our CSS and pop in this new rule. We're going to position that element fixed. That way we can move it dynamically easily in JavaScript. Now the background for this element is going to be an image that I created that is opaque. You can kind of see through it a little bit. And that was that big opaque circle that was my parallax background that you saw scrolling when I showed you the demo. Now that's set to no repeat so that that little circle doesn't repeat in that element. And we're positioning the background image within that element. So that little circle that's the background image of that element, you can position that circle to live anywhere you want within the element. You can see my element has a width of 100%, so it fills the entire width of the parent element that it's within. And then we have the height set to 800 pixels. And my little circle, my transparent circle that I made in fireworks was only about 550 pixels. So I just pushed it down off the top of the element, the background circle, 200 pixels. I pushed it down off the top. So 0 pixels is the left, 200 pixels is the top positioning for this background image for this element. Now if we take a look at that, you can see now we have our transparent circle here. That's the background of the div. But when I scroll, it's just staying in place. It's not moving yet because we have no parallax function yet. Now let's go into the JavaScript portion of our document and let's type in window.addEventListener open and close parentheses semicolon. The first parameter is what we're listening for and that's scroll. So anytime the scroll event fires off. The next parameter we give at event listener is the code that we want to run when that event fires off. And I want to run a function called parallax. And then the final parameter is use capture and I want false for that. So basically anytime the page is scrolled parallax function is going to run. So let's take the name of that function. Let's go right above our event listener there and let's type in function parallax open close parentheses opening curly brace and closing curly brace now the first thing we want to do inside of that function is get an object reference for this element the parallax layer one and we do that easily by saying document dot get element by id now here's the one line of logic that you're going to apply to make the parallax layer one move accordingly so I'm going to take this object reference. In my next line, I'm going to type in parallax layer one dot style dot top is equal to a certain number of pixels. 
and we have to dynamically determine the number of pixels. Now the first thing we can do to determine that is type in window dot page y offset plus pixels. So that that will be a string that has a number and the px. But now you're not done there because what will happen if you run this, let's test it out and start scrolling. See how it scrolls downwards and at the same speed as the content? You don't want that. So to make it scroll with the content or seemingly with the content, you could put minus here to make this a negative number. Now test and you'll see that it scrolls with the content, you see? Now, is one last little bit of logic. We're going to put parentheses around this number and we're going to say divided by 4 to make it scroll at a different speed, a fourth of the speed of the content. Now run that in your favorite browser, scroll the page, and now you have parallax scrolling effect because the layer behind is scrolling at a different speed than all of the content. Okay, so really, essentially, it's this one line of code that's just repositioning the top position for that layer. And that's how it's moving it up and down, scrolling it with the rest of the content, but we're doing it at a fourth of the speed. So if I was to change that to a 10, it's going to really scroll slowly. So let me roll my scroll bar and you'll see that the parallax layer rolls very slowly now compared to the rest. All right, now I'm gonna throw in one last little bit of logic just in case some people have trouble figuring out on their own. You can have multiple parallax layers. So I'm gonna put a parallax layer two right underneath parallax layer one. I'm gonna copy the rule, the CSS rule for parallax layer two or for parallax layer one and I'm gonna change it to parallax layer two. That one's also going to be position fixed. The background is going to be the same. You can make it a different uh, background altogether. And this one I'll make height of a thousand pixels and I'll push the circle down 400 pixels and I'll push it over to the left maybe 600 pixels. Now we have two parallax layers but we're only moving one with JavaScript and let's see what happens. You can see now we have two parallax layers. Here's the other one sitting still. Now let's make both of them move. So let's go into our JavaScript. Let's take this back to a four so that our original, the first parallax layer is moving at a good speed. So now let's just copy these two lines. Actually, let's copy this one first. Control C, Control V. Change this to layer two, this to layer two. Then copy this line and put it under that one and change that to a two and change the speed now to be a eight. Now let's go to file, preview in browser, Firefox or whichever browser you want. So you can see here is parallax layer one, here's parallax layer two. Let me scroll and I'll show you. You can see how they're moving at different speeds. Each parallax layer is moving at independent speeds as the page is scrolled. You see? And you can put as many parallax layers as you want in there. So if you didn't before, now you understand the logic behind parallax effects and you can also refer to Disney's multiplane camera and how Disney invented parallax effects for animated movies. You can search the YouTube search bar right now for Disney Multiplane Camera and you can watch a pretty cool video all about it.